Before we begin, we will, as is our usual custom, turn to our capital of grace symbol, gather together what we have done from last Covenant Sunday until this Covenant Sunday, and offer it once again to our mother and queen here in the Shrine of Light. My queen, my mother, I give myself entirely to you, and to show my devotion to you, I consecrate to you this day my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, my entire self without reserve. As I am your own, my good mother, guard me and defend me as your property and possession. Amen. Now today, as we begin our reflection together, we are going to do what Jesus asks us not to do. Yes, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is not for the kingdom of God. However, in our case, I think Jesus may be happy because it is the last month before our motto changes. From January 2022 up to and including this day, we were looking at our motto for the year, which is lead from the shrine with trust in divine providence and charity for all. We're going to do this step by step by looking at the major ideas in each one of our reflections. In January, you may recall, we used a little story as an example to lead us into the world of something, a virtue, and actually a right for human beings that runs through the very heart and core of Schoenstatt, and that something is interior freedom. The little story we use goes like this. Ever since I was a little kid, I did not want to be me. I wanted to be like Billy Weldon. And Billy Weldon didn't even like me. I liked like what he liked. I walked like he walked. I talked like he walked. And I signed up for the same high school that Billy signed up, which was why Billy Weldon changed. He began to hang around with Herbie Vandedam. He walked like Herbie. He talked like Herbie. He mixed me up. I began to walk and talk like Billy, who was walking and talking like Herbie. And then it dawned on me that Herbie walked and talked like Joey Haverlin. And Joey Haverlin walked and talked like Corky Sabinson. So here I am, walking and talking like Billy Weldon's imitation of Hervey Vandedem's version of Joey Haviland's trying to walk and talk like Corby Sabinson. And who do you think Corey Sabinson is always walking and talking like? Of all people, Dopey Wellington, that little pest who walks and talks like me. This unknown author hit the nail on the hail head, which is part of our problem today. And that is we don't dare to be that person and that gift that God gave to the world at this time. And already in 1912, over 100 years ago, 
when our father began with this, as a spiritual director of the boys in the seminary, his very first talk had this key statement that has accompanied us forever. And that key statement was, under the protection of Mary, we want to learn to educate ourselves to become firm, free, priestly personalities. And slowly and carefully, Father, through his instructions and through his personal guidance, showed the boys how to become that, of that and we acquire that personal freedom, what freedom which really made them who they are. And he acquainted them also with a term that indicates the opposite of what they were to be. And that who they were at this point was a mass man who did what everyone did, as they did it, and how they did it. And the opposite, what Father showed him, was the autonomous new person, self-acting, animated, doing it with spirit, who does not shy away from decisions, who takes charge of his own life, and whose freedom is rooted from within. And with those ideas in mind, our special striving for the month it was suggested that we decide why we do something and how we do something and for what we do something in regard to who and what we are. Because we should become more and more aware that we who have made the covenant of love have been chosen and we're very special and we are personally loved. So with those ideas in mind, and then all the other things that came upon us from Covenant Sunday, January, to Covenant Sunday, February, was the basis for our contributions to the capital of grace. In February, we looked briefly at prayer, because we knew that if we wanted to acquire and make this freedom our own, we could not do it all by ourselves. And so we took the de one of the definitions that Father gave us of prayer, and this definition is as follows. Prayer is personal conversation, a personal speaking with God. It should be an expression of our very own interior interests. And for this, to have this personal conversation, an expression of our personal interests, it is presupposed that God, the Blessed Mother, Jesus, are a real person to me, to each one of us. And so we, we, you, we again had a guide in what we should become, and also how we could pray. And the guide was given to us by Father, who got it in an article from the newspaper. And it was an example of a little French boy. And when he prayed, he talked to our Lord in this way. He said, Dear God, I want to be good every day. I want to be good because you come daily into my heart. So obviously, he attended Holy Mass and went to Holy Communion. Then he continued, I can't do all my homework, and I still make spelling mistakes. But I want to do the best so that you, dear Lord, can see that I am learning. I love you, Jesus, with all my heart. At home, I'm hardly naughty, dear Jesus. But Daddy sometimes gets cross with me. He is sometimes cross because I often get up from the table without permission and because I quarrel with Odelia, 
his sister. They should have spanked me, he means mom and dad, but they didn't, and I am glad. I hope they won't. Jesus, I love you always, and I love your mother as well. But I don't know if you love me very much because I have so many faults. I do not listen when I'm told to leave Odelia alone and not argue with her. Once we even had a fist fight, but I won't do it again, dear Jesus. I promise. Sometimes I talk back to the teacher and I am stubborn when I have to eat soup or fish. But I want to improve so that you, dear child Jesus, will be happy when you see me at Holy Communion. Of course, now, these are a child's interests, such as homework, wanting to be good, fighting, not fighting with a sister, spelling mistakes, etc. But the important point is the boy speaks from his heart and he is not talking into a vacuum. He is a talking to someone. And so we could summarize this process of prayer in this way. The mouth speaks, the heart joins in, and practical life repeats. The little boy's mouth spoke to Jesus. It came from the depths of his interior, from his heart, and in his practical life, he wanted to apply the good things that he knew. And so, this is then what we were going to try to do in February, to develop, to increase, to further our relationship with our covenant partner, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, with the Heavenly Father. In March, we took advantage of the time, and we put March under a two-word heading, and that two-word heading I'm going to say in Spanish. The heading was Si Padre, which means yes, Father. We chose this, first of all, because in March we celebrated the going home of one of our original Schoenstatt members, Jose Cruz. And on his tombstone, he has the words written very large so that it can be seen clearly. Si Padre. Yes, Father. So obviously, that was the guiding light of his life. We also looked at other role models for the Yes Father, the Si Padre. And of course, the first one in the month of March would be St. Joseph, an outstanding person who used the Yes Father, lived according to the wish and will of the Heavenly Father. We also looked at another Joseph, Joseph Engling, one of the very first young men who we actually rest on his shoulders because his contributions to the capital of grace would help to make our shrine a place of grace. He was killed in the Second World War, and one of his acquaintances wrote this later. We can say of him, Joseph offered his physical limitations, and he had several. He was clumsy, he was big, he had a speech impediment, but he also offers his successes and vast experiences of unsuccessful apostolic commitment, his self-education, and the hardships of his life as a soldier on the battlefields of World War I for the growth and spread of Schoenstatt. On May 31st, 1918, He'd offered his life for this intention. He died on October 4th, 4th, 1918, near Cambrai, France. 
we can say that the result of his dedication, his yes father, has had a profound effect. He didn't see it, but we see it and we experience it. And then the quote continues. After Joseph Engling's death, the others were aware he was greatly missed by his family and friends on earth, but he became an even greater intercessor and friend in heaven. Until today, he remains one of the great inspirations for Schoenstatt members around the world. And we also can take a great role model in our father, Father Kentenick. Already at his first assignment as the leader of the boys, as their spiritual director, in his opening talk, he says, then came my appointment as spiritual director. It was entirely without my doing. Hence, it must be God's will. That's the sea padre. I now place myself entirely at your disposal, meaning the boys, with all that I am and have, my knowledge and my ignorance, my ability and inability, but above all with my heart. And when we go to the founding document, a terribly difficult situation to make that proposal to the boys that we should ask the Blessed Mother to come and dwell in this cemetery chapel in a very special way and be the mother and educator of ourselves, in our school, our province, our country, and maybe even beyond. But after struggling for months, he said, if God wants it, it will work. If God want, doesn't want it, it won't work. Therefore, yes, Father, I make the proposal. The same happened, the yes, Father, on January 20th, when Father made the difficult decision that he would rely on the spiritual efforts of the Schoenstatt members to live their covenant so that he would be exteriorly free and by living their covenant, they were working on their interior freedom. And also on May 31st, when he wrote this famous letter explaining the time and the difficulties of the time and told about the great illness, which actually was the illness that we looked at uh, in January, the mass man or the separation of life from God through dissatisfaction. So over all these historical incidents, we can write the question, what does God want? Or according to our year's motto, with trust in divine providence. In April, we took the step of rejoicing. It's like pulling the rubber band very tight, the sacrifices. What do you want, Father, now? And then, after a month of this, alleluia, the Lord is risen, and Jesus, our Lord, has risen a bit more in me. May, in, me. in May, we looked directly at our mother and queen and what the symbolism was for the flowers that we offered her that they were a sign of our love. Each individual flower was a particular contribution to the capital of grace given out of love to the Blessed Mother. And when we gathered together either physically or spiritually and placed our blossom into the crown, that blossom contained all that we have done from the Covenant Sunday in April to this uh, Covenant celebration in May. In June, we didn't run away from the flowers, but we took the, 
the special example of the first couples in Milwaukee who were the first ones to make the covenant of love. And if you record that, remember, that gentleman had a great love for roses. And so for the covenant of love, he ordered dozens of roses to be placed on the altar as a decoration. And Father, seeing this as an opportunity from divine providence in the following instructions of the people, took aspects of the rose, the color, the leaf, the root, the stem, the, the fragrance, the bud, and explained what the symbolism of this could mean in regard to living their covenant of love. And then finally, in August, not last nor least, we looked at our small dedication prayer in which we tried to concentrate during this month on the meaning of giving ourselves entirely to our covenant queen, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our heart, so that when we pray this prayer and our other oral prayers, we are thinking of what we are saying and we then are applying that to our lives. And so with this now, we have come to a certain plateau in regard to our year's model. We have tried to conquer it bit by bit and step by step. And so next month when we come together, presumably we will have a new model which will put a new and different focus on our striving. And so with this, now that we stand in our plateau, I think we could hear Jesus say to us, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And for us personally, he would say, well done, good and covenant partner of our, my mother. You have been faithful in trying to fill the capital of grace. And now I want you to know that you have done much in regard to saving the world and enter into the joy of knowing that your mother, queen, and victress hears your concerns and she needs your help in whatever way you can, so that she can, from the shrine, make the world into a Schoenstatt, a beautiful place. So happy striving, and during this month, you can choose personally a point in which you want to use as the basis for your striving. Nos compole pia, benedicat,